I now had my end plates and my counter plates. So the next thing I needed to do for my seat supports was to put in the Traverse cross members. These must be a minimum diameter of 35 millimeter and 2.5 millimeter thick. They can be actually tubular or box section like I've chosen and mine just happened to be 40 millimeter box section, three millimeter thick. This method of measuring the bar for cutting wasn't really working out. So I decided to make my own jig. I'm happy using the box section for my cross members because it would be quite complicated drilling tubular bars for threaded inserts that you need to put in for the, the upper mountings. You also have to build uh, extruded sections, little platforms around these, so it seems like an awful lot of extra effort rather than using a square bar in the first place. These angle iron sections that I'm using will actually be the next step in those mountings, but for now I've cut them a little long and I can use them for this purpose. So I've drilled a hole in the end of two of them. Then I'm going to bolt on two little plates loosely on each end and the two sections will be able to slide within each other and I'll be able to take my measurements from the tunnel to the inner sills. It's a little bit of time going into making this but I think ultimately it will make the whole process quicker. Let's see if it works. Okay, they're nice and twisty and it goes onto the end plate which the transverse member will be welded to and they are sitting on top of the counter plates which I have to weld to the floor. So everything is taking its position from this. Getting it nice and level. I have the car leveled left to right at the moment. So when I see it looking true to the end plates and level, I lock it in position using this vice grip. See, this is real, I'm fumbling. Hold your breath, and then that's it. Like taking a photograph in metal. I could then easily copy those angles onto the bar, ready for cutting. Followed around these curved edges, and use the set square then for the top side and underside. There's at least most of them sit square. There's one exception. I'll cut on the outside of my markings the first time just to make sure all this is working well. I have just four of these bars so if I cut too much I'm going to be in trouble. So now you see I've got the angled end and I'll just trial fit it in the car. So it's actually a little long and I use the flap wheel to trim it down. I'd be more confident next time I'll cut right down the black marks. That fits really nice. Taking the next measurement, getting the hang of this now. I realized then to get the relationship right between the front and rear bar, I needed to get the car level front to back now as well. So I took it off the axle stands and then dropped it down a little bit, using the top of the sill as the level point. I'm placing a five millimeter drill bit underneath that plate. So I have enough area to weld along underneath the counter plate. In hindsight, I should have drawn around the counter plates before I did the hole saw drilling because up until then I had them very accurately positioned but I lost that a bit but because I did the hole on the two rear cross members for the seat belt or harness um, eye bolt that kept me one true position so I could work off that and then because I'm using levels, work it all the way around and get it 
exactly the way I want it. But it, it would have been handy to have the tracings of the uh, the counter plates. Might have made it a little bit quicker. I'm using the angle iron from my jig, clamping on the box sections to make them level true to each other. And then I can adjust them up and down on the counter and end plates. This will mean that the seat mountings, which will be made out of that jig, will be sitting completely square. Newer seats are being homologated with those mountings as part of an entire system, but there's still a little bit of homologation left for seats using mountings built within certain parameters. Happy that I have it square, I'm putting in a few tack welds between the counter plates and the car body. I then started welding the cross members to the end plates. With them securely attached, I could then unbolt them and take them off and weld the hard to access sides. So that was handy how the eye bolts allowed me to locate everything. I'll remove it now so I can get a good weld on this cross member too. And I can start taking all this apart and save it for doing the other side. I'll change my welding position and come inside the car. So I'm coming in at a good angle at this and can do some nice neat welding. Slightly less neat are the welds I'm doing on the counter plates to the inner sill. Just doing it in short bursts so I don't burn through the thin metal of the car body. But it should look and be acceptably strong. Unbolt these now. A little bit more awkward with the, uh, the bars in place. I'm using a flexible extension there on the little ratchet. Which is quite handy. And the welding had actually sweated the plates together but it came out it had got quite messy in here with the swarf from all the drilling and it was sticking to the bolts when i was dropping them down on the surface and this damaging threads so i decided to hoover uh, especially when i was going to do this wire wheeling there's going to be a good blast of wind uh, sending all that metal swarf everywhere I cleaned up the areas i'm going to be welding and I'm just using some ordinary bolts now to block the holes so I don't get weld in the threads. And a lot of these, and I only had some long ones, so I'm using the, um, the gun to carefully drive them in. Being confident of the captive nuts I welded on, especially the ones in the sill, which I wouldn't be able to get at if they broke off. Now doing the counterplate there at the back on the tunnel and just taking the opportunity to flatten the metal up to the plate. That's what the captive nuts looked like in the tunnel so the holes I drilled weren't actually too extremely big. Finishing off the wells on the counterplates and on the cross members. It'll be tight for washers on the bolts holding these cross members to the counter plates. So I'm just going to grind off a tiny little bit of the weld so that they sit flat. Here's 
cleaned off the wells with the wire wheel. They weren't particularly dirty. Nice clean metal I'm using. Took out those temporary bolts. And now I could see if they'll fit. I'm not going to fit them in permanently now because I want to be able to spray them properly and under them when I'm doing the body of the car. So I'll just put a, a bit of this well through primer that I still had to hand just to stop any flash rusting. Came back the next day as it was and bolted them in a little bit just for the satisfaction of seeing them sitting there. Then transferred all the gear to the other side to repeat a very similar process for the driver's seat. You can see that I'm mounting this rear support a little bit further forward as close as the original seat mountings which I'm preserving would allow. Then the front support is ahead of the original car's cross member so it was a long span so that's why I wanted this to be as close as possible. The tool I'd made for measuring the vertical angles of the cut for the cross members also came in useful on this front member for getting the angle that the top side needed to taper due to the shape of the tunnel. Again with all the measurements transferred and the angles cut with the bars in place attached together I checked all the levels then like jumping into a pool it was a matter of taking a deep breath and starting welding. One last check of the space around each of the nuts so that the bars wouldn't interfere with them and that I might not be able to get them out. I started on this counterplate. This time I only did tack wells between the cross members and the end plates because um, if you remember the way the they actually sweated to the, the counter plate the last time. So this time they'll be easy to take out. I welded in the counter plates then with the bolts back in place protecting the threads. And then did the end plates to the cross members. It's funny how complicated this all looked when all the end plates and counter plates were laid out and now it's starting to look neat with everything connected together. I can then remove these to paint them properly and also to drill them for fitting the mountings for the seats.